Hello. Welcome back to our sessions on uh, transmission and distribution. This is Professor Uma Rao bringing you the lecture series under the ages of VTU e-learning e-sectional program. So we are dealing with module five in the course on uh, transmission and distribution. And in this session, I will be uh, introducing uh, the concept of power quality and why uh, we are interested in it and some uh, recent developments in the field of power quality. So uh, in this module, in the first section, uh, we studied about reliability here. So we saw some in indices of reliability, like uh, how much of power loss is there uh, for a customer and uh, how many customers are affected and uh, things like that. So reliability was very important a couple of decades back because we were short of power and uh, the main focus of the power industry then was to ensure power to everybody, right? So all over the world, it was the same. Now, once the basic uh, product is available, here when I mean a product, I mean uh, electrical power. Once the basic product is available, we look for quality. Clear. Yeah. So then came up the concept of power quality. And is reliability and quality different? Um, yes, they are different, but reliability is an implicit part of quality. See, there is no point in uh, having a product which is of very, very high quality unless it is reliable. Reliable means what? It should not break down. Clear. At the same time, there is no, no point in having a product which doesn't fail, but it doesn't give me everything I need. The quality is not very good. So let us take, for example, your simple uh, to distinguish between reliability and quality. Let us say you have two cameras. Okay. So in one camera, the pixel and then the zooming facility and the quality of the picture, the color combinations, everything is fantastic. Right? You say it's got a very high quality. But in the camera, there is some defect in the product, so it fails repeatedly. It may have to go for repair. That is one thing where I have quality, but I don't have reliability. Now, let's take the other end. I have a cheaper camera, right? The resolution is not very good. And, uh, uh, you know, the whatever it is, the quality of the picture I take is not very good, but it never fails. So that's the case of having reliability without quality. So, you know, what is the point, right? So inherently now in power industry, reliability is become a part of quality. So you can use a general word power quality and understand that reliability is also addressed in, in that, okay? So now we will go to some formal uh, definitions of power quality and uh, you know, what are the recent uh, developments uh, in power quality. So let us see some modern issues very much uh, you know, visible uh, in India. And I've seen it in some other countries also. So you see this, you just see that some wire hanging there with a number of switches. And so you have a lot of uh, connections. And look at this from a roadside pole. These are all photographs I have taken. And this is under the building. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, connections taken to different parts of the construction site. Look at this picture, how it looks like. So what am I trying to show here? I'm just trying to show that at the consumer end, you know, it's possible to have a very haphazard type of connection. You can't do this kind of a connection in transmission. You can't run the system at all. But when it comes to the distribution, I'm sure all of us would have seen such connections. So in this scenario, I am trying to ensure power with such connections to everybody 24 past 7. I'm not saying this occurs everywhere. No, I'm just saying this is also a part of the system. Okay. Now let us see 
one more uh, uh, interesting slide. So you see, see the transition in the kinds of loads we use. So you see here, we used to use incandescent bulbs. Today we use LEDs, CFLs. Okay, this is LED and this is CFL. And we have a lot of LED TVs, very, very popular. Compare this with our old CRT tubes. And we have modern drives, which use variable frequency drives. So these use a lot of power electronics to uh, control uh, the machines, electric machines. And needless to talk of our computers everywhere, Right, the entire world is flooded with computing uh, devices and um, power supplies, regulators, chargers, mobile chargers, modern LED TVs, okay, automated industries. So wh wh why am I showing you all this? Because of the contrast, the changing load profile. So earlier days, when we spoke of electrical load, we meant some lights, some fans, motors in the industries and so on. But today the entire profile itself has changed. Electronics has pervaded our lives everywhere, starting from your mobile, your laptop, everywhere we have a lot of electronic gadgets. They all need chargers to work and then PVs, computing devices. And the entire process industry has been automated. We talk of sensors, we talk of IoT, collecting data, analyzing it through the cloud, completely automated processes. And all the process industry, entire drives have become uh, uh, you know, power electronic uh, driven. So you see there are a lot of changes in the load profile. Okay. So, you know that the current in the system, power system, is determined by the load, right? You, you plug in an iron box, it will draw a current at UPF. You plug in a motor, it will draw current at some power factor. So the very nature of the system, the current depends on, on the type of load. So you can expect that when the nature of the load changes, the type of current drawn also changes. Now, does this lead to any problem? Yes, because I may not be drawing sinusoidal current. So if you have a rectifier, the rectifier may draw some harmonic currents, non-sinusoidal current. Yes, and uh, your equipment may be operating at lower power factors. So obviously, when the load profile changes, the current in the grid also will change. So we will now go ahead and see how this is going to affect the concept of quality. First of all, what is the concept of quality and how is it going to be affected by this? So any power problem manifested in voltage current or frequency deviations that results in failure or misoperation of customer equipment is said to be a problem of power quality. Here, any power problem manifested in deviations from the normal prescribed values that is not stated but implicitly understood. So deviations, when you talk of a deviation, you have a reference. What's the reference? The nominal definition I have given in voltage or current or frequency which results in failure of equipment or misoperation. There is another definition. Electric power quality refers to maintaining a near sinusoidal voltage at a bus at rated magnitude and frequency. So your utility is giving you the voltage. The current depends on the load you're going to connect. Is it clear? So therefore, I must ensure proper voltage so what, what, do, what do you mean by a proper voltage? Sinusoidal, at a bus, at rated magnitude and frequency. At rated magnitude and frequency. 
In addition, the energy supply to the consumer must be uninterrupted. Energy supply to the consumer must be uninterrupted. Reliability. It should be reliable. Power quality, another definition, is a set of electrical boundaries that allows a piece of equipment to function in its intended manner without significant loss of performance or life expectancy. So what does it mean? I draw some boundaries and I must operate within this boundary so that my equipment behaves the way it is expected to behave. The way it is expected to behave. And there should be no reduction in the life expectancy. That's also important. So here we are focusing on quality in terms of performance and in terms of the life of the equipment. Obviously, if the life of the equipment uh, comes down, it means that the cost goes up. Yeah. So why this sudden interest in power quality? Why did we say it should be nearly sinusoidal, uh, all those things, rated no deviation, minimum deviation, and so on? So let us see why this interest has come in the recent past, in the recent past. So first, new generation loads, they're all microprocessor based and they have automation. So I told you where, where, where is this new generation load? Everywhere. In home, we use Alexa, right? It must have a controller there, programmed. Process industries, everything is remotely controlled, minimized manual intervention. Okay. So our life is pervaded with microprocessors and microcontrollers, some visible, some invisible. Right. So whether you look at the domestic load, you look at the industrial load, you look at uh, you know hospitals, you look at commercial loads, everywhere. We can see the increased automation. Now, what is the problem with this? I think you all worked in the lab. You have seen that your electronic equipment are very sensitive. How I many many of us have burnt op amps, chips, and you know, and transistors, diodes, and so on during our uh, college uh, days. So they need quality power. They need quality power. Next, we have adjustable speed drives. So these adjustable speed, so we, we know, no? we know induction motors we, in, in our uh, machines we have studied. It's not possible to change the, uh, control the speed of the induction motor very easily. So now with power electronics, that's no longer true. So everywhere we use power electronic drives. So these drives draw non-sinusoidal current from the grid. So a non-sinusoidal current means what? Harmonics. So you all know, you have studied FFT, fast Fourier transforms. So that tells you that in a signal, what are the frequencies contained? That is known, isn't it? So you, you, you see now that because of this uh, adjustable speed drives, we have a lot of harmonic currents drawn in the grid. So this is another issue, recent issue. Then customers are better informed now. Some, some years back, the awareness of the customer was not so high. Whereas the modern customer is well informed about their rights, about the concept of quality and so on. And the fourth is modern power networks are large integrated networks. So when one component fails, it can lead to multiple failures. This is one concept. Not only this, if you take an industry which is automated, Right. Supposing your entire control is automated, then if there is a problem with your control, the entire industry goes to sleep. Earlier, that's not the case. What happens? You have one part of the process, you know, monitored by one operator. 
another process monitored by another operator and so on. But now what I'm doing, I've removed all the operators, entire thing is done remotely, online, automated process. So if that process itself fails, the monitoring process fails, the entire process industry will fail. So the cost of failure is very, very high. Now, hence, and now all these run on electricity, clear? Therefore, now it is very essential to have supplies of very high quality, electrical supplies of very high quality, clear? Now, let us see some recent developments also uh, that have uh, taken place. Governments all over the world, they have revised their laws, which regulate the electrical industry. And uh, everywhere the focus is on achieving, one is cost and another is carbon footprint, red reduction of carbon footprint. Yeah. So this is true in India also. So Indian government is uh, extensively encouraging, you know, reduction of carbon footprints in power generation and usage. And the second one is substantial increase of interest in distributed generation. Here we are talking of renewables, which is distributed, not concentrated. So if you have a Heidel plant, you'll have a huge plant of say 1000 megawatts. Now this is, this is a different case. This is a different case, right? So especially solar, the advantage of solar is that you can have it in small quantities also, small power generations and spread out. Everybody's rooftop can have a solar generation. So governments are providing subsidies, technology has matured, Solar panel cost has come down drastically. Efficiency has increased with better materials. And uh, this also is a recent development. And as I said now with uh, communication, you know, you know what's happening in the world. So people want to benchmark their quality against quality which exists somewhere else in the world. And proper indices have been developed to help benchmark. So if I want to say whether a quality is good or not, I need, need some number, right? I can't just, if, if it's a textile, I can feel it and say, okay, the quality is good. I can't do that with electricity. I can't do that with electrical power. So we need some way of, uh, you know, knowing it. So now people have developed. Over the, over the past decade or so, a lot of uh, you know task forces have come together and developed indices to help to benchmark various aspects of power quality. Now, the one issue here is uh, utilities still may not have the record of quality disturbances. Now, slowly it is coming. So supposing a capacitor switching disrupts a manufacturing process, you know, I may not have a record of the capacitor switching. So when we want to zero down on uh, what causes problems, we need proper data, data records, data has to be captured, right? So uh, it's slowly coming, slowly coming up. Now, uh, from the customer perception. So obviously the customer and utility will perceive in different ways a fault. So from the customer perception, uh, they feel that around 60% of the uh, faults are due to natural reasons, maybe lightning of their equipment, failure of equipment or not having power, etc. So due to natural causes like lightning, storms, tsunami, something, and 17% of the problems are caused because of the utility side issues, like old uh, transformers, malfunctioning breakers, etc. This is what the customer feels. And 12% because of the customer premise, that is improper wiring, grounding at the customer premise. And around 8% because of some neighbor's 
problem which mitigates to you and 3% to others. This is what the survey taken uh, and uh, this is what the customers feel. And uh, the utility, more or less the natural is around 65, 66% natural causes. They say that due to the utility, it is only 1%. Whereas here the customers have given it 17%. And they feel 25% of the faults are from the customer side. Improper wiring, not uh, adhering to some operating uh, standards, poor quality of loads, you know, which uh, we use because they are cheap and so on. This is what the utility feels. Okay. So obviously there is some uh, difference in it. Yes, definitely. Because there are two uh, opposing uh, viewpoints. Okay. So with this introduction, I think now you're clear what is the meaning of power quality. Any deviation from the nominal prescribed value is you can call it as power quality issue. So the magnitude, you must have the rated magnitude and frequency and shape. Shape means what? Sinusoidal. The utility is promising you sinusoidal voltage. So I must get sinusoidal voltage from the utility. So deviations from the uh, uh, prescribed value of either the magnitude or the wave shape or the frequency can also be another way of uh, describing a power quality issue. And uh, we saw that there are many interesting changes that have taken place, which is responsible for renewed interest in power quality. Thank you.